going on guys welcome back to another episode of rust mod we're with a special c10 truck today and this year i wanted to show a bunch of really cool c10 trucks that here at lsfest 2023 we're with our friend trevor and he's going to show us this awesome c10 you might have seen him do some sick burnouts with some trailers and a bunch of other really cool stuff so he's going to give us a tour of his awesome c10 So I am on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is at Evan Trevors. It's my name backwards. Everybody calls me Evan. It's totally, <laughs> if that's the worst thing I get called, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, my YouTube is Hot Rod Homestead. That's kind of what we call the garage. Um, so that's the easiest places to reach me at. Uh, I get a lot of questions uh, pretty frequently. You know, it doesn't bother me. If anybody needs something, please reach out. I'm happy to help however that I can. All right, so this is a 1985 Chevrolet C10. It's just a custom deluxe. It is right at the bottom of the totem pole as far as the square body trucks went. Um, it's a manual window, manual lock truck, you know, nothing fancy. It was a 305 700 truck. Uh, so it was a pretty good little daily whenever I bought it. Um, when I did buy it, uh, I reached out to a family, a county over from me, Jane and James Swanson. And I went up there, I looked at it. It was actually her father's truck and uh, went up there she was asking like 1200 bucks for this truck granted this was like almost 13 years ago so prices have definitely changed um i wasn't arguing with her at all it was a, it's a fairly clean truck it was literally in a field under a tree and i looked at it and i was like yes i will take it i gave her 1200 bucks i put a battery in it um i put gas in the carburetor and it turned over twice and fired up i swear it was meant to be so and she had said it sat for like six or seven years something like that so I, I wasn't sure if it'd run or not i didn't even bring a trailer i didn't care we would have pulled it back with a rope but um i was pulling out the driveway and she stopped me and you know it was her father's truck and she gave me 400 dollars back and she told me to have fun with it so for 800 dollars, i got a clean title 1985 c10 i daily drove this truck for a year um just like that and so after that it already had hubcaps the original tires and all that stuff so once this tire finally popped because of course all my buddies wanted to pick up that back passenger side. So I ended up going with uh, the boss wheels. That was cool at the time. So it had 20s on it. Uh, I ended up putting a 383 in it and that's when I realized it would spin tires and uh, tires were too expensive on 20s. So I went back to 15s with hubcaps and that's where the white walls come from. I just uh, thought it was cool. Yeah. It was the cheapest tire. It's still the cheapest tire I can find. They're not cheap anymore, but they were. And uh, a guy came up to me at the Moonshine Festival, it's a local car show at the house, and he asked if, uh, if I would sell the 383. And that was right when LSs were starting to get popular. And I was like, you know what, I might. And he offered, he just threw out a number and I was like, yes, yes I will. I was like, when do you want it? He said, let's pull it tonight. So I drove <laughs> this thing home and we pulled the motor that night and he took it home. And that's where my first LS came from. It was a uh, LY6. Uh, whenever I pulled it out, the cam bearings came with it. I've never pulled a cam out of an LS and be able to reuse the cam bearings. Everyone I get sucks. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. And so, but I didn't know how to do cam bearings at the time. You know, this was a long time. It's, it's going on 10 years now. And uh, so I took it to our engine builder. His name's Johnny Thomas. Um, and he actually ended up punching that motor out and doing a 416 stroker. And oh. that's where the big motor came from. Okay. I put 70,000 miles on that motor. Yeah. like really hard miles because it would really spin then and uh, took it out to Hoonigan. Uh, I ended up popping both head gaskets in the burn yard. I was the last episode <laughs> of Daily Transmission so that was pretty cool. Oh that's cool. And uh, my buddy Lance Disroom he dialed it in. You know I say 75,000 miles that is a lot of miles on anything really and uh, he dialed this thing in for me as soon as I got the LS done and that 416 uh, we tuned on it for like one night and he never touched it again going to the burn yard all that stuff happened to the 416 finally 
And so I threw a stock 6.0 in it. This is literally a stock 6.0. I put a BS Racing S480 turbo on it. And Lance done his magic and here we are running the tents. This event, this is kind of like the big reveal of my drag pack. Um, I've always kind of wanted one. I usually just run my rallies up front with hubcaps and then I'll do uh, another set of rallies with a set of uh, Mickey Thompson ET Street R's for okay. the back. I've literally ran those for like four years. I, I don't do burnouts on those. So, but then whenever that, one of my buddies had these for sale, he bought them for an OBS. And these are actually RC comps in the front. And they're very, very similar. They nearly match in the back, but they're actually welds in the back. 17 by fours in the front and they're 15 by tens in the rear. And then it's got a set of the Mickey Thompson tires up front. I think they're the 26 slash six wides or whatever for a 17. And the rears are 275, 60, 15. So it's a 28 inch tall tire in the back. So is this the original paint that was on the truck? This is the original paint. Wow, yeah. I love that. So that's our, I love original paint trucks. Like I that's my too. thing. It's, yeah. it's uh, patina like is the thing. So I love that. Yes, sir. So give us a walk around just of like under the hood. What's up? So what, you know you have the six liter in it now. So this is a stock 6.0 liter uh, LQ4. I actually traded a set of wheels and tires that I had for it. Okay. Uh, did not have high hopes for this motor at all. Yeah. Um, I literally tore it apart and I could tell it was high mileage. I pulled the rings out just to kind of check. I pulled one ring to check it and see yeah. about how many miles I thought was on it. And it gapped to like 025. So I was like, <laughs> we're not going to gap yeah. these. We're just going to let it ride. That's it. I really expected it to last like two weeks. Right. And um, I found a set of 243 heads off a of marketplace that I have no idea what's go what happened to them. Mm -hmm. So they just are what they are. I didn't change springs, didn't change anything. Still has factory push rods and rocker arms. Really? Uh, had the high rise at the house I bought off one of my buddies. He was he just wanted to get rid of it and wanted you know no money for it hardly. So I bought it. Uh, I got the turbo off of uh, BS Racing on Black Friday, so it was like six hundred bucks. So it's really just kind of bargain built under the hood. Yeah, that's what's and, awesome, and it works. And it works. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing, man. I was like two weeks ago marks two years that this motor's been in this truck and i have no idea why it's still lasting Dude, that's the best way though like you get a junkyard motor with a lot of miles on it and they just last that's that's how they work i just don't get it man yeah. my tuner was over here messing with it lance he was over here messing with it this morning mm -hmm. we gave it a little bit more boost to see if we could pick up any uh time on the track yeah and uh i think it made roughly between 16 and 18 pounds okay and it went at 1033 at 136. Wow. It's pretty, pretty jam up with tools in the back. Yeah. So I still got a full toolbox. I've yeah. been on two hot rod power tours. Um, I literally bounce the rev limiter in it every time I crawl in it. <laughs> and it just it just takes a, a pretty heavy beating. So I'm I'm super impressed with their turbo setup. Yeah. But as far as everything else, I mean, it's the Trick Performance T4 manifold. Okay. Uh, I actually got it as a. Uh, one of the bad ones, I forget what you call it. Like the, it had a misprint on the, on whenever they made it, it had like a little piece of slag on it and I got it for like half price. Oh, cool. So that was pretty jam up. Yeah. Um, and it's just a eBay high flow manifold on the driver's side. And, and it wraps underneath? It does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very cool. So it is a 4L80. Is uh, it any special 4L80 or? Uh, it's got, it's nothing really fancy. Um, a guy that we're all really good buddies with at the house, his name's John Tessier. Mm -hmm. um, he is the best transmission guy okay. I've ever known. He used to, he did a lot with GM whenever that he was younger and he moved up into doing transmissions for himself. And I recommend him to everybody. He's super, super, super good very talented uh, super nice guy you know we we all get a, he was actually going to come up here mm -hmm. and uh, he didn't have a chance unfortunately but it's basically just a hd uh the clutch pack setup the upgrades and all that um and that's really you know it's got the shift kit all all the good stuff just for i don't know what what you would normally say five six hundred horsepower yeah and here it's holding almost a thousand. Right. I mean, it's pretty crazy. He's just he's just that good, and I will I will brag on John. Yeah. He is so good. Him and Lance, you know, they're a good team. Yeah. Lance does the tuning. John does the transmissions, and they they're like best buds. So they hang out together all the time. Oh, that's super cool. It's, it's good to have a, a <laughs> pair of guys that are like that. Yeah. 
Um, it's got a circle D triple disc, okay. like 3600 stall converter. Okay. That helps a lot yep. on the on the hardcore turbo pulls. Mm -hmm. um, it was good for the 416 as well. But um, I tell you what, that last converter, it had, this is the same converter. Yeah. This is actually the same converter from when I started. So it's like 10 years old. Wow, that's got awesome. got almost 100,000 miles on this converter. Dude, that is crazy. And so it is, is holding on like a champ. Yeah. <laughs> the radiator is an auto rad radiator. Our friend Jim Walker, he's a couple counties over. He actually produces these. Mm -hmm. I would honestly say they're some of the best radiators in the yeah. country. There's some really good products out there now. But man, I really, really love this radiator. This truck will run in traffic idling at like 170. Oh wow. It's got a 168 thermostat and it stays at 170. Like literally when the fans come on, they come on at 180 and it drops down to 170. So super good uh, radiator, the whole cooling system there. And then it's just got the 4K, just your generic Amazon trans cooler. Okay. Um, whenever I'm going down the highway, it's usually about 125, 130. Okay. And I just made a pass on the track with the burnout and then trying to foot brake it on the line, you know, that builds heat. Yep. Uh, the, the engine was like 178 at the finish line, and then the transmission was like 160. So, yeah. pretty good stuff. As far as the interior goes, um, Greg Purple, he's he's in town. Um, he did a seat, it's just a seat cover. He didn't have to do any padding. Um, miraculously, it was in really good shape still. Um, it just had one rip in the seat where that your bottom sits, so he, Put a seat cover on it and we were done it was super simple mm -hmm. uh, it's got dakota digital gauges oh, i sweet. put them in whenever i did the first swap that is a huge improvement when you can see what's actually going on it's a big deal yeah now i have the terminator x max oh okay and so i i use the little and it's just a little screen i don't have a big one but i've got it right there at the cigarette lighter and it's just so easy to see yeah and it's digital you literally look down and you don't have to focus on like like looking at a old school clock mm -hmm. you know you don't have to focus on where you're at you literally just see it so do the dakota digital gauges integrate well with the holly stuff they do okay. yes so they actually sell Holly and Dakota both have the, the setup, mm -hmm. but man, they have everything from sensors that integrate with each other. They plug, they literally have, they plug and play together. Yeah. Um, Holly is like, they're top of the line. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Yep. Now, as far as price wise, they're a little bit high, but I really think you pay for the quality and the fact that you know it's going to work. Where it's literally a stock square body on this. I did a dash pad. Um, okay, that's really nice. Yeah. Your typical square body dash pad, they're all cracked. I don't care if they're inside or not. Yep. Um, the door cards are still the same. Obviously, this one's wore out. But to show you how little this truck was used, the passenger side is like brand new still. Okay. Never changed it. Um, that's just how it is. The passenger side seat, uh, it's literally like nobody's ever sat in it. Wow. And I drive so crazy, not many people ride with me anyways. So <laughs> I just, it, it's still like brand new. Yeah. So this is a Curry Enterprise's nine inch rear end. Okay. That's another product that I can really brag about. Mm -hmm. It's been in here for almost 100,000 miles and wow. it's seen some serious, <laughs> serious abuse. Wow. Um, the number one thing I go through is tires and that on the back fender is literally just from this weekend. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, it's nothing compared to what I normally do at one of these events. Like, I'm hoping they'll let me in the burnout contest. That'd be pretty That'd be awesome. Because I brought, I brought the tires for it. Okay. But, um, you know, uh, the Curry Enterprises, it is a nine inch, it's a 373 gear. Okay. Um, funny story about the Curry though, is, you know, I got the truck for super cheap, all that stuff. I was lowering it down. And when I put the 383 in, I knew the 10 bolt was never going to last. Mm -hmm. So I got to look in back then it was Craigslist. Mm -hmm. I got looking on Craigslist and I found this rear end on Craigslist. Eight hundred dollars. Oh weird, wow! Weird number. I don't know how, but it was the Curry rear end, three seventy three gear, and it actually already had Wildwood, Willwood, whatever y'all call it. Yeah. Disc brakes on it. Oh. And so I was like, holy smokes! How yeah. could that? That's cheaper than just the brake kit or just the rear end. Yeah, you got. So I literally it. buy one get one free, and it was on a discount there. Um, I was a little bit nervous about it, uh, but man, whenever I put it in, I don't know how many miles on it before, mm -hmm. but I put fresh fluid in it, threw it in here, and it's literally lasted through the 383, the 416, and now it's behind a turbo 6.0. Yeah, so. that's super cool. So the whole truck is still basically a factory suspension. Okay. It's got drop spindles up front with, I, I had to cut my factory springs because I ordered three inch when we lowered it down. Yeah. And I hated it. it was, right. One, it was too low, and two, it was too stiff. You know, I just didn't like it. So I actually cut the front springs down 
to land right about where the three inch drop was, but it rides so much better. Okay. Uh, in the back, it's actually a flip kit with the leaf spring. And then I actually put a pinion block in there. Like I, I cut oh, okay. one inch block to make it a pinion wedge. Because mm -hmm. for some reason you can't really get pinion wedges anywhere except for some part stores might carry it. Yeah. And then I've got a two inch drop shackle. Um, Very cool. The only upgrade to my suspension really is the cow tracks in the back. Okay. And I set them, when we set them up, we pulled it on a four post lift. Uh, so all the weights on it, installed it there. And then whenever we set it back down, I set it to about an eighth inch preload. Mm -hmm. You know, it sits about, the bar going across, it's about an eighth of an inch above the leaf spring. And it's just magical. I don't, it works. I don't know why, but it does. So yeah. we just Very got cool. lucky, I guess. <laughs> so with the 416, I ran a 255 Walboro, you know, your average mm -hmm. LS swap fuel pump with a Corvette regulator, all that. Whenever I moved up to the turbo, I talked to Lance. He does a lot of turbo setups. And I'd asked him, you know, what's my best? kind of set up to where that I'll be ready if I do add power, build a motor for it one day. I, I hate doing things twice. Yep. And so I went ahead and went with twin 525 Hellcat pumps. Yep. Call them Hellcat pumps. Yep. Uh, I bought an 87 fuel tank. So it's like a fact, just like factory style fuel tank. Uh, I mounted one pump on the sending unit and one pump is just hanging down. Okay. Uh, they're both in the baffle still. So when you take off the line and you're low of fuel, it doesn't just suck air out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm running twin 525. I've got AN PTFE line, cause I run a lot of V85. Yep. Um, it wise from the tank and then goes into one right okay. on my frame rail. Okay. And so it's one eight AN going all the way up to the fuel rail. Okay. And then from there back, it's got a six AN return going through the regulator and my content sensor so I can I can put 93 octane in it right now and it'll kind of adjust things way down to be able to run 93. Right, so you have kind of like a flex fuel setup. It is just like a yeah. flex fuel setup. Yep. You know, usually I run white walls on it. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Nexan, they've reached out to me a couple of times. They've done some advertisements with the truck because mm -hmm. I might go through more tires than anybody <laughs> that they have at any of their other customers. Yep. Uh, my buddy, uh, Chris McBrayer out at Silver City Tire, he always hooks me up. Um, he does a really good job with the truck. He aligns it. He does kind of everything with the wheels and tires, all that. So, you know, I really appreciate those guys helping me out. You know, just kind of everybody that's helped me with it. Lance is one of my, you know, MVPs, John Tessier, uh, Johnny Thomas. He's the engine builder over by the house. And he's like, he's the man. I basically did this entire motor in the driveway. This is not a Johnny Thomas motor. And he's not happy about it, that, <laughs> that it's doing what it's doing. Right. He just tells me, you know, he. And I can't believe it either that it's still running like it is. But, yeah. um, you know, just just extremely blessed to have the truck, man. I've met so many people yeah. and literally the car community, like it's unmatched. Oh, it's awesome. So it's just, and, and as y'all know, I mean, y'all do this stuff a lot, but man, there is nothing like the car community. It's, nope. You know, I've, I've been extremely blessed to have the opportunity to meet everybody, to be able to go to these events and to be able to just kind of hang out with people and get to know them. So, you know, just everybody along the way, you know, it's. I can't just thank one or two. I got to thank everybody. Yeah, you know, no. everybody's helped me. My wife is super patient. Uh, my babies love to ride in it. You know, it's kind of a family thing. So. Yeah, that's awesome. So, but but yeah, man, we just enjoy the truck. It's fun. I'm not out here to be the fastest or to do the biggest burnouts. I just, I literally just try to have the most fun in the parking lot. <laughs> that's that's what it's all about. All right, so this is a product that I kind of made up in the backyard. This is one of our prototypes that I just wanted to try out. Uh, so this is a uh, cutout for your exhaust that's on a V-band. Um, this is a four inch, I have a four inch exhaust on this truck. And what it does is my exhaust comes straight off the turbo and out the bottom of the fender there. Whenever you cap this, it is uh, gasket free. So you never have to use a gasket. It's got the inlays, so it lines up perfectly every time. And you can see I've bottomed it out. A, it's really low, bottomed it out a hundred times and uh, still working awesome you never need a gasket for it you just uh put it on and then whenever that it does it actually goes through a magnaflow muffler and so it's super quiet you never hear it and then whenever you come to the track it actually picks up 80 horsepower when you open this up really <laughs> on the dyno we tried it we did a pool and it made 720 through the muffler mm -hmm. and then it made 799 without it on that pool wow. so pretty pretty awesome little detail here yeah. you know and it spools faster with a muffler, but it can't get the air out fast enough to make the horsepower it's trying to produce. So right. pretty cool thing. This is something that I make. It's called a brat cap. 
Okay. It's different, you know, something cool. Uh, I put the little eyelet on it because when these things are hot, you can't touch it. Yeah. So you grab it with a pair of pliers, hang it up, you hang it on a hook in your garage, you know, keep the V-band with it. You'll never lose it. It takes about 30 seconds to put it on and about 13 seconds to take it off. For awesome. every order that I actually do sell, it comes with a free sticker and a free 13 millimeter little ratcheting wrench. So wow. you literally need nothing. All you gotta do is weld it on and you're ready to rock. That's sweet. So where yeah. do they find that at? So I, they can message me. I don't have a website or anything. Okay. They can message me anywhere. Look me up on YouTube, any of that stuff. But uh, I'm gonna do a video kind of advertise and show people how easy that it actually is. Sweet. Electric cutouts are the cool thing right now yeah. because you just hit a button and they're done. Mm -hmm. But as far as performance, making a thousand horsepower, you blow right through them. Mm -hmm. it, it literally breaks the motor inside the gears. So this right here on a high horsepower yeah. uh, vehicle, this right here is the way to go. That's sweet. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Yes, yeah. sir. Once again, huge thanks to Trevor for showing us this awesome C10. Super awesome that we got to meet all these guys doing these great videos. If you guys have a Rusto mod that you want to show on the channel, send us an email. Maybe we could set something up at some local shows that we'll be at this year. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.